Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. Today is also Easter, so I want to say right off the bat, big congratulations to everybody that is watching this video on such an important day. Yes, spend time with family, all of that, but if you're trying to better your financial future, you are also doing it for your family's sake. So I want to put that out there in the beginning of this video, but let's go, baby. We are heading into another week, and it is going to be a very exciting one. So we got a lot to cover. I don't want to waste your time with the intro. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys have not already. Also, if you guys want to get access to all of my trades in real time, link down below in the pinned comment that's going to be very important for everybody that is that is involved in options trading if you want to step your game up and take it to the next level and come join us link down below like i said in the pinned comment go ahead and follow me on twitter as well that is free 99 now let's dive straight into it and first things first what happened over the weekend well really nothing happened over the weekend nothing that is going to move the markets in a substantial way so what are the markets going to be paying attention to and what will move the markets this week well it's going to be earnings and earnings are going to be the most important thing because overall I've talked about this many times but the stock market trades off of fear greed news and fundamentals now what is most important out of all of that obviously it is fundamentals because the markets can react very negatively or very uh, enthusiastic at times about certain events that happen but over time they always revert back to fundamentals and the markets have been acting very irrational lately whether it is going down dramatic amounts historic moves to the downside and then historic rallies to the upside it's been a very volatile year but what it all comes down to is what is the fundamental valuation and i think that is really up in the air with the fact that people were flooded with all of this extra money via obviously unemployment boost and benefits and stimulus checks throughout the past year, investors really have no idea how to value companies in a normal year without stimulus. So it's going to be very important what these Q1 earnings look like. And that's either going to be a very bullish thing or a very negative thing. And as you guys probably already know, if you watch this channel or you don't, companies and investors, they really react negatively or positively based off of guidance. So that's going to be the most important thing. What do companies say as far as guidance? And I think it's going to be a mixed bag overall, but we do have some high flyers that start to report this week, including Netflix, IBM, on Tuesday and then on Wednesday you do have Tesla Thursday you have snapchat and then on Friday you have companies like Verizon Cleveland Cliffs uh, you know a really a mixed bag for this week you got some banks you got some oil stocks you got energy stocks you got Netflix you got Tesla so it's gonna be a mixed bag across the board certain sectors will be affected based off of these earnings for the next following week that's where things really start to heat up on Monday you have coca-cola Activision. Um, I don't know what just happened there, but that's really what you have for Monday. On Tuesday, you have Microsoft, Google, UPS, Visa, 3M, GM, and then on Wednesday, Facebook, PayPal, Ford, Qualcomm, Spotify, Teladoc, and then on Thursday, you do have Apple, Amazon, Twitter, Intel, Roku, Robinhood, Caterpillar, Nokia, Southwest, and then on Friday, it's a lot of oil stocks, uh, Exxon Mobil, Chevron, Phillips 66, a lot of those players on Friday. So it's going to be a mixed bag for this week. Next week is going to be the most important earnings season, but you're going to get really either a good or bad sentiment this week. And that's really what is going to dictate this video here today, the price prediction for AMC stock. And I got to give you guys the bearish and bullish case for this week, because it's going to be very pivotal for AMC stock. So if you do look at the chart and where we are actually sitting, we're going to dive into the other data like the Ortex Data, Stonko Tracker, Max Payne, all of that. But what you could see right now is that obviously on Monday, there was a lot of pain in the broad markets with the NASDAQ dropping 2.14%, Russell 2000 dropping 1%, S&P 1.21. The Dow held up a lot better, but was still green down or red down 0.33%. So it was not a great day overall, especially for your tech stocks. What did AMC do? Well, it held up very, very well. And it's really fighting in this consolidation level in between about 1675 and about 1890 this range this dollar 30 
cent range it's it's really going back and forth that's the the best way to put it and we're sitting right here under our 50 day moving average that is really the resistance level that we are seeing right now and you are finding a lot of demand at this level so it's going to be important whatever these earnings throw at us it's really going to either help the markets out or it's going to hurt the markets i will tell you guys one thing right now that investors are paying very close attention to one guidance but how is the consumer doing are they still going out are they traveling are they spending money the markets only care about two things right now the markets care about the federal reserve balance sheet how soon are they going to reduce that balance sheet because after all that they would be selling bonds and making interest rates go up and those are more more so your real interest rates when the when you guys hear this is just a golden nugget when you guys hear the fed is raising rates it does not mean your credit card rates your car loan rates your auto uh, or not your, your your home loans will go up that's not what that means it it simply means that's the rates that the banks charge each other to lend money because they have to keep a certain amount of their reserves as reserves to cover their potential losses, right? So that's what that is. When the Fed talks about reducing the balance sheet, they're essentially saying they're going to flood the markets with bonds. They're going to sell bonds. And when they sell bonds, that obviously drives down the price of bonds. The yield is fixed, so it drives up the 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 yield that you would get paid on those bonds, right? So it drives up these bond rates. And as you guys can see from the bonds, the rates have been going through the roof. If you look at the 10-year treasury bond, it has done nothing but absolutely go parabolic. This looks like a, a momentum stock, right? But it's the bonds so investors are going to pay very close attention to that we really need to see a move down in the bonds to see an overall rally in the markets at this pace it doesn't look so good now that does not mean that earnings will be bad it, it, it doesn't mean any of that it doesn't mean amc stock is destined to fall down it's not saying to go load up on puts on amc it's actually quite the opposite you want to be a buyer when bond rates are going up when fear is going up and it's going to be very important what is happening with the consumer right now because the only other thing the markets care about is how soon are we heading into a recession i think the markets are coming to understand that we are likely going to head into a recession but if the consumer starts to slow down that's where things could really get shaky in the stock market now let's go ahead and look at the ortex data and the max Payne and the stonko tracker data then we will go over a price prediction for this week so the short interest of free flow is 19.82 percent current shares that are sold short of 102.16 million utilization of 100 percent and days to cover sitting at 2.42 so nothing has changed too much as far as the ortex data is concerned uh but definitely looking very primed to see potentially a short squeeze i don't know if that'll happen this week we'll talk about it a little bit more in just one second but we are still primed and ready to go as far as the option activity on friday zero percent positive order value three orders totaling 217.05 thousand dollars over the past week though 45 percent positive order value 140 orders totaling 52.02 million dollars so the overall dollar activity from institutional investors hedge funds using options on amc was pretty neutral at 45 percent so not really giving us a clue uh you know to the sentiment there in that regard but obviously the stock has trended to the downside as far as the stonko tracker data you're looking at about 95,000 calls that are out of the money 6300 calls that are currently in the money and as you guys already do know baby it comes down to those weekly options that FOMA buyers head in when catalysts start to roll in for amc that really does send the stock up so I'm, I really have not been holding a big weight to the option activity heading into a week. The calls that are in the money or out of the money, yes, it does make a difference. But really what gives us those explosive moves like that 45% positive day that we seen two, three weeks ago was really due to the weekly options that were heading onto the chain on a daily basis. I mean, you've seen hundreds of thousands of volume on pretty much uh, a majority of the strikes for that weekly option expectation and that's what really helped drive us through the roof and you actually see an option flow values if you look at the options of over a billion dollars for a week 
right during that week that we actually seen a rally and compare that to last week we only seen 52 million dollars worth of options that were bought on amc so i think that showed us something i think it showed us something important that the fomo is still there institutions hedge funds regular people they are going to buy options in amc they're going to buy weeklies they're going to trade the momentum in amc stock now the question is when are shorts actually forced to cover that's a good question Leave your thoughts down below in the comments based off of that. We are going to have a video coming out at 4 o'clock today that is going to be going over all of that, why I think the MOAS will happen really towards the end of the year, and it breaks down my expectations for what's going to happen, and I think that's going to be very important for all of you guys to really uh, watch that video to get my perspective, not because I'm going to be right or wrong, but I think it's a valid opinion, and I think I provide you guys some... Uh, thoughts and due diligence to kind of come to a good conclusion on why why I think it'll happen around that time. But nonetheless, the max pain is sitting at $19 per share by the end of this upcoming week. Now, as far as when we were talking about price predictions for AMC for this week, I might be wrong. I might be right. Not really what I strive to do. I strive to hold myself accountable. Some weeks I am right. Some weeks I am wrong. And I fully admit that. The weeks that I'm right, it's spot on the money. Like this rally that we've seen right here, 45% day, I was spot on the money. Last price prediction, I was dead wrong. So don't trade based off of this information. But this is really taking in the macro environment here. I don't know if a catalyst will come out uh, tonight. I don't know if a catalyst for AMC will come out tomorrow or throughout this week. If it does, this situation could be much different. And we know AMC's business is improving. And I think that's really a reason to why we held up so well on Friday. Uh, regard the Regardless of the other facts there, like we're consolidating, we're looking at a potential technical breakout above the 50-day moving average, I think AMC is showing a lot of strength, and I think Friday overall showed us a lot. Now, if we're looking at a price prediction, I want to give you guys the bearish shit first. If the week is bad, if Netflix earnings are bad, Tesla earnings for whatever reason are bad, these oil companies, just everything is looking bad, then AMC on a worst case scenario, in my personal opinion, could fall back down to about $15 per share. Now, do I think that is going to happen? No, that's my worst case scenario. My base case scenario is actually AMC stock heads back up to about that $20, $21 range. I think we're going to find a little bit of resistance again around 21 like we did back here. And that's really my base case is we end slightly under 21, but we come up and re retest that level. That's my base case. That's what I expect to happen. Now, if we get a catalyst, if we get good news, some reason to buy AMC, I think it's very probable that we break out above $22 in between $22 and $25 and find support above $22 per share. That's the 100-day moving average. If we break out above that, we'll likely find that resistance at 25 maybe come back down to 22 too, but we're going to need some catalyst to do that. Maybe it is what Adam Aaron announced on Friday after market close, right? Uh, about the AMC app accepting different cryptos. Maybe we just rally off of the start on Monday. Now, that's very possible. Very possible we get another catalyst that AMC bought XYZ business and the stock does start to rally. So that's really the best case scenario, in my personal opinion, in between $22, $25 per share. If we get a wild catalyst, then obviously we could see another 45% day. That would put us back closer to that $30 level. So that's really my expectations. Worst case scenario, around that $15 support level base case scenario what i expect above the 50-day moving average at $18.46 per share but below $21 per share really in this range and that would be a positive week overall breaking above $48 or uh, $18.46 per share is going to be bullish either way because we're breaking above the 50-day moving average, our current resistance level. Best case scenario, in between $22 and $25 per share, breaking above $22, finding resistance at $25, and ending somewhere in that range. So that is pretty much going to be all for this video. That is all to add. Not too much actually happened over this weekend. The most important thing is you guys enjoy time with family, all of that good stuff. But again, congratulations for everybody that is actually taking time out of their day to stay caught up with this financial education that will help you better your family's future. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.